Okay, I got asked a question, kind of a simple question from a fool on the internet. So let's take a, a quick look. Sometimes some of the best questions, quote unquote, come from the simplest of minds. Kind of like a child. Here we have a neodymium iron boron and here we have a cheap ferrite magnet. Not so cheap, it's actually very well made. You can see here now where it wants to sit centripetally anywhere it wants to sit against the yellow. I have the dielectric inertial plane marked correctly with the white stripe. So look, if I turn it where it doesn't want to go, boom, red up. Boom, red up. You see that? Can you see that? Red up. No tricks. So it only wants to be attracted to the yellow side. We'll talk about polarity in a second, but that doesn't matter. So look, it's sitting there where it wants to go. Boom. Boom. Always yellow down, right? Look, yep, always yellow down. Let's look that again so I'll make sure I'm not tricking you. Yep, always yellow down. So, always yellow down. So now, let's take this really strong neodymium magnet and put it where it doesn't want to go. Red down. One second, two second. Boom. Now let's look what happens. Boom. Doesn't want to go to the yellow. Now it's red down. Oh, it's reversed. What sort of trickery and BS is this? Oh, look. Hmm, let's see. Ah, there we go. Ah, now it's reversed. Let's see if I can reverse the polarity on this ferrite magnet with this strong $800 neodymium iron boron 6 inch by 2 inch N48 gauss magnet in one second. Let's see if we can do that. Remember right now, ah, only wants to go to the red. I reversed the polarity. Now let's reverse it again. Ah, one second. Boom. Now, boom. We reversed it again. Only took one second to change the polarity on this ferrite. Why is the answer to that? Well, think about it. Let's prove it. No trickery here. Hope you can see it. Boom. Only wants to be, only is attracted to the yellow. Forget about polarity right now. So it's only attracted to the yellow, right? Okay, let's put it where it wasn't want to go. 1,000. Boom. Now, uh, now it's attracted to the red. It's not attracted to the yellow. So, see? That's where it wants to go. Centrifugally, centripedally, look at it spin around. This is the uh, magneto uh, gyroscopic angle of precession. You see the exact 42.5 degree angle here that is spinning around our neodymium iron boron magnet. This is the maximum velocity, which is reciprocating around the other side. The other side is doing the same. It's reciprocating. This is F5, field incommensurability, reciprocating, returning here. What I can't get through the heads of all the mental midgets out there is that they keep asking, well, what side of the magnet is clockwise and what side of the magnet is counterclockwise? Well, they both have clockwise and counterclockwise spin. If this were, say, the north side of the magnet, the centrifugal is going clockwise, the centripetal is going counterclockwise, and just the reverse for the south pole. If this were the south pole, the centrifugal is going counterclockwise, and the centripetal is going clockwise. Get it? Look, okay, so now look. We got attraction at the red side of the ferrous magnet, sitting on top of the 6 inch by 2 inch monster dangerous magnet. So let's look. Oh god, it's tough to get off of there. Look, boom, only attracted to the red. You see that? Boom. I'll let go of it. Uh, only attracted to the red side, right? Uh, only attracted to the red side. Let's see. Uh. So let's give it one second, going where it, putting it against what it doesn't want to go to to the yellow side. Only one second to reverse the polarity on this ferrite one inch magnet. There we go. 1,000. Boom. Now, uh, maybe I didn't do it exactly long enough. Here we go. One second. Actually, I had it down there for so long. Okay, so now it's only attracted to the red. See? Usually it takes two or three seconds on a smaller magnet than this. Now it's only attracted to the red. Now let's put it where it doesn't want to go. On the yellow side. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Now let's see what it's attracted to. Uh, it's only attracted to the yellow. Uh, uh. So let's put it where it doesn't want to go. Give it a longer charge. Reverse the polarity on the ferrite magnet. So now it should only be attracted to the red side and not the yellow side. Eh, I reversed it, right? So, always red down. 
Try this experiment yourself if you think I'm fooling you or tricking you. However, I doubt you have one of these gigantic beasts. You can do it with a, a smaller neodymium and boron magnet, but it takes a few seconds more. So, only attracted to the red side. So, let's put the yellow side down and give it about five seconds, okay? No trickery here. You can see the fields of the, uh... There's nothing in this case. This is what I used to transport it in. No trickery, no electrical devices. Very simple, okay? So, now we've reversed the polarity. Let's see what happens. Should have given it a longer charge. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Let's roll it around. Yellow side attraction, right? Forget about polarity for a second, all right? Yellow side only attraction. Oh, there we go. Here, see? Look. Yellow, look. Yellow side down. So let's reverse that now. Let's make it so it is yellow side up. Ta-da. Now look, it'll only want to process yellow side up. See that? This is the magnetogyroscopic processional angle of 42.5 degrees, as mentioned in the book, uncovering missing secrets of magnetism. Now look, we will have flipped the magnet. Just like I said, yellow side up. Let go, boom. Yellow side up. No trickery, no hand movements, no illusionist BS. I let go of it immediately. Boom. Let me do it on my palm so you don't think I'm fingering the magnet. Ta-da, see? Usually it takes one second, or one second and a half, sometimes less than a second, but anyway, this is a one inch ferrite magnet. Okay, this is a six inch N48 gauss, six inch by two inch neodymium iron boron. The lattice structure, the hexagonal lattice structure of the neodymium iron boron magnet holds its charge. Someone was saying, well, why can you put two speaker magnets together and they'll destroy themselves? Well, it's the interatomic magnetodielectric nature of the incommensurable field of a magnet, or what we deem to be a magnet, which is technically a dielectric object, which holds the dielectric charge extremely well on a neodymium iron boron magnet, but not on a cheap speaker magnet, the really old crappy speaker magnets anyway, or a ferrite magnet like this. You see how I only get attraction to the yellow side here? Doing it one-handed. Yellow side only, right? Look. Boom immediately to the yellow. So let's reverse that. Eh. It's reversed. Let's prove it by processing it around. See, I can prove I've already reversed it. So now, let's do it one-handed again. Yellow side up. Yellow side up. See, look. Yellow side up. Let's reverse that again. 1,000, 2,000. See, getting red side up now. I keep having to show you this because I've posted this on an earlier video and someone said, Well, you're just playing a trick on us. You know, you're just pulling some YouTube crap on us. Well, do it yourself. As Eric Dollard said, do the experiment yourself. Now look. Boom. Red side up. Oh, look. I reversed the polarity of the magnet. Look. Doing it one-handed. Boom. See that? No trickery. No electricity. Boom. You see any electrical cords around here? No. There's an electrical socket over there, no electricity here, just two magnets. Neodymium iron boron with the spe special hexagonal lattice structure of the neodymium iron boron. It is able to hold a very strong dielectric inertial charge. That's why a neodymium iron boron magnet, if designed perfectly, made correctly, and charged perfectly from discharge capacitor banks, is able to hold such a strong charge. And a cheap ferrous magnet is not. So look. I'll show you one last time for all the naysayers. Look, I can hardly keep it over on the yellow side up. Boom. See? Red side up. Uh. So let's reverse that to where the yellow side only wants to go up. 1,000. Put it over here in the centrifugal. You see this specific angle, that 42.5 degree angle? That's the gyromagnetic processional angle. I didn't create that or invent that. If you actually research uh, magnetic resonance imaging, they know about this uh, gyromagnetic processional angle. So, now let's see if it's reversed. Well, of course it is. Look, yellow side up. Oh my god, no trickery involved. Let's see here. Boom. This is just a one inch ferrite magnet. See? See how I've reversed it? No trickery, nothing underneath my hands. 
except the ink on my scan. Look, you see that? Yellow side up. Let's do it one last bloody time for all the mental midgets out there that was saying, oh, well, that's trickery. You're just full of shit. You can't reverse the polarity of magnet like that. Well, yes, you can. Okay, see? It's red side up now. Now let's see what it's attracted to. Red side up. Oh, God, we reversed it again. Well, I hope that was proof enough. If it isn't, then, well, you can kiss it where the sun doesn't shine. That was a little humor. I'm a little gruff. Not really. I'm, uh, I give a lot of stuff away to people. I'm actually a really kind, compassionate person. Actually, the people that talk about compassion the most in life, I've always found out when the crap hits the fan, they're the most uncompassionate. So, don't judge a book by its cover. I've actually been surprised that I've had nearly 300,000 downloads on the book so far, and I've had extremely little comments. The only comments I've really had are from the idiots that are, uh, I call it the cult of quantum. Eric Dollard calls it the quantum mysticism. Tesla called it insanity. Oliver Heaviside, uh, when uh, Relativity was published, lost his mind because he knew Relativity was so insane. Oliver Heaviside painted his finger... The, the guy who gave you everything that you use today painted his fingernails pink and threw away his mattress and slept on a giant stone slab. He lost his mind and everybody fell for the nonsense and the BS of Relativity and the cult of quantum, which is nothing more than gre rehashed Greek atomism. Unicorn, unicorn particles and pixie dust discharge particles, muons, gluons, electrons, and all sorts of other nonsense. It has nothing to do with nature. Nature does not do math. Get that through your thick, bloody skulls, okay? Nature only knows centrifugal, centripetal, charge, discharge, convergent, divergent, okay? Doesn't work that way. Centripetal, centrifugal. Nature doesn't do math. What is absolutely simplex is not necessarily simple. This magnet is extremely simplex. Understanding it is not simple. Big difference between simplex and simple. Now, let's take one last look at this giant beast before I close out this video. Everybody says, well, what's that dielectric inertia plane bullshit you keep talking about? You just lost your fucking mind. I just know you're just fucking crazy. Will you see it right there? Do you see that edge right there along the magnet? Do you see it? I hope to God you see it. Yeah, it's right there. You see it? That's the dielectric inertial plane, like the flywheel. It's even some current day electrical engineering texts refer to it as, elect as uh, electrical inertia, quote unquote. It's the same thing Heaviside called it. Steinmetz, James Clerk Maxwell, Tesla, the guys that invented everything that is running your computer, your lights, Okay, your refrigerator, the bloody computer that you're on right now, you see that thin line right there? That is the dielectric inertial plane. There are trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of, for lack of a better analogy, gyroscopes, not literally gyroscopes, but the uh, magnetodielectric geometry of a gyroscope perfectly lined up this way with their flywheels along. What is driving a quote-unquote magnet is right there. Everybody thinks, well, the magnetism's over here. It's coming over here and it's entering over here. Well, yes, that's true, but what is driving that? Magnetism does not exist by itself in nature. It is always driven in the termination of something else, either electricity or dielectricity is driving it. Inside the inner atomic, what is the inner atomic volume between the discharge circumference of an atom and its nucleus. The quote-unquote air, for lack of a better term, of the inner atomic is magnetodielectricity. How a magnet like this or any other, a good one, a cheap one, a shitty one, a, a ferrite magnet or a neomagnet is created by discharging capacitor banks, zapping a magnet, which spins up this, for lack of a better analogy, you can read about it in the book, this magnetodielectric incommensurable field geometry. This is the inertial plane. This is magnetic viewing film. However, it doesn't actually show you polarity. It shows you the dielectric inertial plane. So, as far as the questions that I keep getting, well, which side of the magnet is the center fugal and which side is the center people? Both. The answer is both. I hope you understand that. The centrifugal is here. Centripetal is here. Let's take a look at this magnet. Oh, okay. This is the North Pole. 
this field finder is actually reversed. The color should be inverse. Now it's painted correctly on the magnet, but it should be inverse on how it's painted here. So we know that this is the North Pole, which means that the centrifugal is leaving clockwise and the centripetal, which is returning from the centrifugal from the other side, is returning counterclockwise and inverse for the South Pole. If this were the South Pole, the centrifugal would be leaving it counterclockwise along this edge. That's where max velocity is. You can see it right there. Do you see the max velocity around the centrifugal, i.e. this edge? That is the centrifugal divergent magnetism leaving and reciprocating. This is field incommensurability. This is field reciprocation. This is not spin or movement, okay? The Earth spins around its axis. This is something different. It is called field reciprocation together with the dielectricity is SI, or field incommensurability, is returning, you can see it right here, got new magnetic viewing film, you can see a little tiny bright spot right here, that is the centripetal, centripetal point of the returning divergent magnetism from the south side or the north side, depending on which way you have it, returning here, either clockwise or counterclockwise. As I stated, with my magnetic field finder, this is the north pole, so Centrifugal is leaving clockwise, centripetal is returning from the other side, counterclockwise. I hope that was simple. I'm glad I got asked a very dumb yet simple and yet important question by someone on the internet. Skepticism abounds, but that's fine, but you know, humans are dumb critters generally. We basically go about our lives worrying about sex and bills and bills and sex and how to get more money and more sex and less bills and how to pay off the bills. We don't think about simple things. A lot of the people that we think were so necessarily smart in the past weren't necessarily gifted or that smart, but they had a lot of free time and they cared more about shit like this, excuse my language, than they worried about getting rich or getting laid. If more human beings cared about discovering things instead of trying to figure out how to get rich and or laid and or both, then we might have already had a colony on the moon or settled Mars by now, but humans are stupid critters and they're driven by their pathetic little adrenal glands and their testosterone and their estrogen, but that's the nature of life, so be it. It cannot be any other way. The Greeks called that term anakie, means is necessarily so, is necessitated. In other words, it cannot be any other way. Thanks for watching this video. Third edition is coming out. Middle of August, there's stuff in there that will make your head unhinge off your shoulders and plop right on the floor. And if you think that's an exaggeration, just wait till you see it. Been performing a lot of experiments and there's unique stuff that no one has ever thought of and no one has ever seen and it will blow your mind. Now, of course, anybody can make a BS claim, but I'll prove it to you. Anyway, more videos to come. Thanks for watching. Hope it wasn't too redundant. I know parts of it were, but sometimes you got to drill a point home to some people's head with a sledgehammer. So, thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.